Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, Nordic Unmanned to field two camcopter S100 UAS. Also, FAA presents Super Bowl 55 safety plan. And if the FAA and Elon make up, there could be a Starship launch. Welcome to the Air News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode filled with the latest news, so let's start with Nordic Unmanned to field two camcopter S100 UAS. Nordic Unmanned has acquired two camcopter S100 systems, with the first delivery last week and another joining in in Q2 2021. The acquisition comes after successful sulfur sniffer operations in Denmark and France. The Camcopter S100 was also recently operated for the world's first full-scale offshore UAV cargo delivery to the active oil and gas platform Troll A in Norway. These operations were both carried out by Nordic Unmanned and Scheibel. Scheibel and Nordic Unmanned are both under contract with EMSA to fulfill its remotely piloted aircraft system services, Nordic Unmanned specifically for maritime pollution and emissions monitoring. The Camcopter S100 measures the ship's sulfur emissions to check compliance with the European Union rules governing the sulfur content for maritime fuels. Measurements are transmitted in real time through the EMSA RPAS data center to the relevant authorities. The Camcopter S100 operates day and night and can carry multiple payloads with a combined weight up to 50 kilograms due to its minimal footprint and size, it is well suited for maritime operations. Hans George Scheibel, chairman of the Scheibel Group, said, The Camcopter S100 UAS has proven its outstanding capabilities and high performance at numerous EMSA operations carrying out maritime surveillance and emissions monitoring all over Europe. After the break, the FAA presents Super Bowl 55 safety plan. Those details after these messages. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at SwiftFuelsAvgas.com. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Wingcopter has secured $22 million in Series A funding. Wingcopter reports that they will use the funds to straighten its position in drone-based logistics with a special focus on healthcare-related applications, including the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. The current model, the Wingcopter 178 Heavy Lift, provides both one- and two-way delivery, covering distances of 120 kilometers. It can accurately lower a package through a winch mechanism or land at the point of destination and return to its origin with a new payload. UAVionics announces TSO authorization for Tailbeacon X Mode S ADSB transponder. UAVionics has received FAA TSOA for its Tailbeacon X 1090 MHz ADSB out transponder. The integrated device, which replaces a rear navigation light, includes and combines transponder ADSB out, SBAS, GPS, and rear LED position light. Tailbeacon X is Arion compatible and is designed as a globally compliant, easily installed ADSB out solution for general aviation and urban air mobility. 
meeting current and future 1090 megahertz ADSB mandates. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems has been selected by the Air Force Cycle Management Center to support the Skyborg Vanguard program. Skyboard will become the foundation of artificial intelligence, machine learning, autonomous capabilities for a family of future USAF unmanned combat aerial vehicles. GAASI President David Alexander says our ongoing investments in advancing unmanned systems over the past 30 years provide a critical advantage for fast tracking development time and reducing overall program risk. Airflow to develop full-scale piloted technology demonstrator. Airflow is in the process of developing one of the first full-scale piloted technology demonstrators of an e aircraft. For the last year, Airflow has been utilizing a subscale model for test flights that have helped develop e flight control technology. The next phase will transform a Cessna 210 into an e with distributed electric propulsion. DEP enables operations in and out of very short runways by providing more control at slower air speeds. Airflow will validate and refine the design parameters used to build the production e aircraft. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. With just days before the big game, FAA presents Super Bowl 55 safety plan. The FAA is working with federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies, the aviation community, and the National Football League to ensure safe, secure, and efficient operations before, during, and after the Super Bowl 55. The Super Bowl will be held on February 7th at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. The agency is planning for hundreds of additional takeoffs and landings and aircraft park at Tampa Bay airports during Super Bowl week. Special procedures, including TFRs and a no-drone zone, will limit flights around Raymond James Stadium before, during, and after the game. The game day TFR will go into effect at approximately 5.30. It will cover a 30 nautical mile ring centered over the stadium and from the ground up to 18,000 feet in altitude. It will expire around midnight, but it may be extended if conditions warrant. Drones also are prohibited inside the TFR. The FAA has established additional TFRs to restrict drone flights for two nautical miles around Julian B. Lane Riverfront Park and Curtis Hickson Waterfront Park from the ground to an altitude of 2,000 feet from Friday, January 29th through Saturday, February 6th during event hours. After these messages, Tensions between SpaceX and the FAA is causing Starship delays. Those details after the break. Whatever your aviation goal, right now is a great time to get started. So you'll be pleased to know that King Schools is having a sale right now that ends on February 9th. You can get 21% off any course by using the order code right now when you call King Schools or order online at kingschools.com. Let's celebrate a new year of learning and flying, and we hope to see you soon at the airport. airport. BLT is just another tick on your pre-flight checklist until you need it. Did you ever wonder what would happen if you had an engine failure over the mountains, marshland, or other dangerous terrain? Take to the skies confidently with the most reliable and highest performing ELTs and safety products on board that instantly mobilize life-saving search and rescue across the world. Read survivor stories from aviators and adventurers who survived life-threatening encounters thanks to ACR and Artec's life-saving technology. Luck favors the prepared at SurvivorClub.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training, and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Welcome back. If the FAA and Elon make up, there could be a Starship launch. The aviation and aerospace world, after witnessing some amazing flying during the almost successful test flight of SpaceX Starship SN8, is waiting for the SN9 to do its thing, if the FAA will let it. Sparring between SpaceX and the FAA has reportedly canceled at least two launch attempts, and Musk is not happy about it. Unlike its aircraft division, 
which is fine. The FAA Space Division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. Their rules are meant for a handful of expendable launches per year from a few government facilities. Under those rules, humanity will never go to Mars, intoned Musk. There are currently two starships erect on the path for eventual flight test, and it's quite a sight. So, no matter what happens to SN9, SN10 is ready to go right behind it. Similar to the high altitude flight test of Starship serial number 8, SN9 will be powered through ascent by three Raptor engines, each shutting down in sequence prior to the vehicle reaching apogee, approximately 10 kilometers in altitude. SN9 will perform a propellant transition to the internal header tanks, which hold landing propellant, before reorienting itself for re-entry and a controlled aerodynamic descent. Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also catch episodes on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Arrow News or Airborne in the directory. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.